yesterday we came up with the topology for the amplifier which sets up the correct operating point as well as applies the signal and takes out the signal in the right way ok. But it has some shortcomings which we were trying to fix. The amplifier we had was to has this is the arrangement we have a source to establish the quiescent gate source voltage. In series with that we connect the input source assuming that it can be connected like that and here we have the load resistance in series with another source which is required for establishing the quiescent drain source voltage ok. And in our example RS and RL were both 100 kilo ohms the quiescent drain current was 200 microamperes and this was 23 volts or 23 volts if you want 3 volts between drain and source depending on the voltage that you want you have to adjust that ok. If you want 4 volts it has to be 24 volts and so on. Now the problem with this I said was first of all we have 2 uh, bias sources 3 volts and 23 volts and this is just not viable because if every amplifier needs 2 DC sources then we will need a very large number for the large number of amplifiers that we normally have in any modern circuit but that is quite easy to fix ok. That part is easy to fix if you want to establish both the quiescent drain source voltage and the gate source voltage using the same source it is quite easily possible using a resistive divider. Now quite easily I can set the ratio of R2 by R1 to be the correct value. Let us say from 23 volts I want to get 3 volts I have to set R2 by R1 plus R2 to 3 by 23 ok. So, that part is easy. Now of course, we have to add the signal and here the complication is that it is not really a 2 terminal device like this with a voltage source in series with a resistance. If that was the case then we could stick it in series with this branch here ok that would work, but we cannot do that ok. That is because it is a Thevenin representation of whatever comes before this. The circuit the actual circuit that comes before this is quite complicated it can be quite complicated and it does not have uh, 2 terminals like this which uh, can be connected in series with something ok it is just the representation. So, really what is available usually is just one terminal we have vi and this terminal is grounded where ground is the common reference node of the circuit. In our case the source terminal is also connected to the common reference node ok. So, we have to use the input source in this form and actually you will see that uh, the same is true for the load as well. The load right now I have connected a resistance in series with the drain and in series with that voltage source and so on. But the load is also a representation of what comes after the amplifier ok. So, that also we will see later has to be reference to the common reference node or ground of the circuit ok. So, now let us take the source. So, we have VI and RS like this and we also know how to uh, set up the gate source voltage that is using this resistive divider, but actually what we need is. So, here we get 3 volts here we get VI in the open circuit condition and at the gate I want 3 volts plus VI. So, how do I do this? Any ideas? So, let us first of all go to something else. So, let us say in general I have some V1 and some other V2 ok. Now, how can I combine these two that is I may want V1 plus V2 or some linear combination of this let us say alpha V1 plus beta V2. So, tell me give me some circuit which will take V1 and V2 as inputs and gives me this alpha V1 plus beta V2 as outputs. What kind of circuit will do that? Huh? 
Rayboard network. What is that? Okay, how? Okay, then? Okay, so there are many ways you can think of. But in general, what I was getting at was, if you throw these two voltages into any linear circuit and look at some node in the circuit, the voltage will be of the form alpha v1 plus beta v2. Of course, we have to use a circuit that gives us the alpha that we want and the beta that we want. But any linear circuit will do this, right? If I apply two sources to a linear circuit, any quantity in the inside the circuit that is any voltage, any node voltage or any branch current will be a linear combination of these two sources in general, okay. It could be that for some of them alpha or beta is 0 also, that is possible. So, we have to now come up with a circuit that will give us the desired value of alpha and beta, okay. So, it looks like with a linear circuit we can combine these uh, voltages, okay. So, now give me sort of the simplest circuit which will do this. What is the simplest circuit that you can think of that gives me this linear combination? We know that in general any linear circuit will do it, but give me a simple resistor. How do I do that? So, what should I do? So, let me call this A where V1 is available, B where V2 is available. So, tell me what to connect to what. Your idea is correct, but tell me how to set it up. Two resistors in series, okay. Where? No, so I have two resistors in series. Where do I connect this to? A and B, okay, fine. Let me rename this V A and V B just for uh, easy. So, what is the voltage that I get here? Huh? So, it will be obviously alpha times uh, V A plus beta times V B. What is alpha? R B by R A plus R B. It is easiest to see if you imagine superposition when this is reduced to 0, then what you are getting is the voltage across R B. So, it is R B by R A plus R B times V A. Similarly, to find the weight of uh, V B, you set V A to 0 and you look at the voltage here and you will get R A by R A plus R B, okay. This is okay. Huh? You are not getting V A plus V B, but uh, we are getting at least some combination of the two. So, for instance, if V A is the signal and V B is DC, we are getting a combination of signal and DC, okay. Is that okay or? So, for instance, if uh, this were V I and this were let us say some V D C, I would get R B by R A plus R B times V I plus R A by R A plus R B times V D C, okay. Now, what I wanted at the gate of the uh, transistor was really V I plus 3 volts, okay. Clearly, this is not going to be possible. Okay. So, this has to be multiplied by some alpha that is less than 1, is not it? So, if I take, if I have two voltage sources and I connect a resistive divider between them that is two resistors and in the midpoint the center tap of that resistive divider I get a linear combination of the two voltages. But of course, each of the weights will be less than 1 and they will be complementary to each other. If you try to make one weight very close to 1, the other one will become very close to 0, okay. Uh, what can be done though is still you can get a combination of uh, the signal and the bias. For instance, I can get 3 volts here easily that is because this can be less than 1 and I can start with a higher value of VDC, okay. But I have to suffer from some reduction in the signal, okay. Some amount of signal will be reduced. It is not desirable, but uh, it is possible, okay. Let us see how to fix that as well. Is this okay? So, in general from a linear circuit you can get the linear combination. So, a resistive divider will work. Uh, note that you cannot make 
if you try to make this ratio very close to 1 what happens? This will be close to 0. So, you have to start with a very large VDC ok. So, you can't go crazy and let us say oh I will make it 0.95. So, it is almost 1, but then the other one will be 0 0.05. So, to get 3 volts you have to start with 60 volts ok. So, again that is not a viable thing. Is this ok? So, here I am only conveying the idea that you can uh, put the 2 voltages or in general 2 inputs into a linear circuit and get the linear combination ok. Now, still this has the disadvantage that yeah I get uh, if I start with VDC and VI I get something smaller than VDC and smaller than VI ok. Why should I lose voltages especially the signal voltage ok. In general it is a bad idea to attenuate the signal. There are many occasions where the signal is quite small to begin with and if you reduce it further it will be even more susceptible to noise. We will not get into the details of noise and so on, but just take it from me that you do not want to be attenuating the signal before you feed it to the amplifier. Okay. The whole idea of the amplifier is to make the signal bigger so that it is discernible right. So, if you attenuate it beforehand then what is the point ok. So, now I will allow some restriction on the signal. I will say that this V i it is not D C ok. So, you can imagine that it is a sinusoid of some frequency omega which is more than 0, but clearly not equal to 0. Okay. Is this fine? So, this happens many times. The operating point of course, is always DC. We set up uh, a quiescent constant VGS and constant VDS and so on, but the signal is not necessarily DC and in fact, frequently it is not. If you take a radio signal for instance, it is AC at whatever carrier frequency it is, GSM will be at 2.4 gigahertz or 1.8 or 0.9 gigahertz or something and audio also has a minimum frequency. There is nothing below. 20 hertz right. So, uh, there is you can imagine that it is a sinusoid whose uh, frequency is definitely some uh, positive value ok. So, now can you think of something which will uh, get rid of this problem where we were uh, having this reduction in signal transformer how will that help? Uh, yeah, so that is ok there are many solutions that are possible right. Now, uh, yeah, uh, what you are saying is you pass the AC through a transformer and add DC to the winding on the other side or something that is possible, but uh, let us kind of stick to this topology and can you modify this in a kind of minor way to get what we want. Huh? No, no, that is fine that is no I do not want to do that right now ok. You are saying that I can compensate for this decrease by increasing the gain of the amplifier, but like I said I do not want to reduce the signal before even it is fed to the amplifier ok. So, just make a very minor modification of the circuit. Uh, what is that? Yeah, you had many ideas yesterday. What can I do? I mean can I use uh, I am using a resistive divider very very minor modification. Capacitive divider that I told you yesterday won't work, right? What is it that when we have sinusoidal signals, like how do we how do we analyze circuits? What is it that uh, we use? Phasers, okay, and then huh? that's all. Okay, all I have to do is I mean. this by itself does not do anything until I choose them properly. So, I will say that there are some general impedances not just resistors ok Z A and Z B. So, what is the voltage that appears here? What is the voltage that appears there? Hmm? Same thing exactly. Yeah. So, the point is but that both of these are frequency dependent ok. So, the formula is of course, correct. Now, let us say V A which is V i right. So, this is the input phasor and this has a frequency of omega ok. So, the output will have a component at omega whose phasor is given by So, input V i is at omega. So, let me say it is V p cos omega t or something. So, 
here if I call this the output, output at omega will be given by what is it? Z b by Z a plus Z b, it is not just the expression, but these impedances have to be evaluated at omega. Okay. I will still show the summation, but you have to realize that the input is at a frequency of omega. So, I have to calculate this impedance divider ratio at the frequency of omega and multiply it by the input phasor. Is this part clear? Yeah. Phasor, I mean, all I, all I am doing is phasor analysis, and phasor analysis is frequency specific, right? You can analyze circuits which have multiple frequency inputs. What do you have to do? How do you do that? How do you do that? Huh? Yeah, you have to do it one frequency at a time because the all these quantities, uh, the impedances and so on are frequency dependent. So, if I have let us say two frequencies in this case some omega and DC which is 0, I have to do it twice once at 0 for the input which is DC and once at omega for the input which is at omega. Okay. So, the output at omega will be this and the output at DC. So, I am assuming that clearly V i this has no DC component and V b is only DC, it does not have any component at omega. So, the output at DC will be only due to V b. So, it will be Z a of 0 by V DC. Okay. Is this part fine? All I do is I evaluate what happens at DC and the first of all what is this uh, business of uh, what does this expression mean? The output is this which is a complex number what does it mean? Phase shifted. Yeah that is right. So, if the input is V p cos omega t what is the output? What constant? Yeah. So, this basically if the voltage at some node is denoted as a phasor okay, and of course, you have to the frequency is implicit here frequency is omega. So, let us say there is a phasor V 1. So, that means that there is a signal which is a sinusoid whose amplitude is V 1 and the phase is the phase of the complex number V 1. Okay. So, that is what it means and this frequency is implicit. So, you have to do this every time and what is this? What does this give you? This phasor analysis it gives you an output. What, what is that output? We use phasor analysis when we have resistors and capacitors and all these things. How does that work? I thought we have to use differential equations and things become very complicated and so on. This is a steady state. Okay. So, if you apply a sinusoid let us say to a circuit with R's and C's what happens is initially there will be a transient and how long the transient lasts depends on the time constants and so on. Now, we will assume only stable circuits whose transients will die down with time. So, if you apply a sinusoid initially there will be some output due to the transient and something due to I mean this is the force response and the natural response. So, there will be a part due to the sinusoid and there is a part due to just how the circuit behaves by itself. Okay. Now, eventually the transient response dies out, the natural response dies out and you will be left with only the steady state response. So, this gives you only the steady state response, okay. but the convenient thing is that we do not have to worry about differential equations anymore. Even with R's and C's the voltage and current phasors the steady state quantities are proportional to each other that is voltage is proportional to current. So, essentially it becomes like a resistor like Ohm's law and the proportionality constant is the impedance. Okay. So, if you have only sinusoidal inputs and if you are only interested in the steady state output, you can use phasor analysis very easily. So, that is what we are doing. Okay. So, this one I mean again please be clear about uh, what exactly you get out of phasor analysis because we get all these complex numbers, but all the voltages and currents in the circuit are real. So, you have to know what it implies. Anyway, now here uh, to calculate the output at omega, I do phasor analysis at omega and I get this. V i times this one because V b has no component at omega its contribution is 0. Similarly, because V a has no component at 0 the DC output is simply this impedance ratio evaluated at 0 frequency at DC times V d c. Okay. So, now 
Can you tell me a way of uh, if I start with VI and 3 volts, I want to get VI plus 3 volts with no attenuating factors in front of either of them? Hmm? ZB of omega should tend to infinity, okay. Uh, what is that? ZB of? Okay. Z of omega should be 0. Yeah. Actually, both will work, right? So, essentially, the choice that he is giving is Z of omega should be approximately 0. Then, clearly, this becomes unity, right? And then, what was that? ZB of 0 should be approximately 0, okay? What were you suggesting? ZB of omega tends to infinity, okay? And okay, that's fine. And then for DC? No, no. What? I mean, tell me the condition in terms of uh, these things. So, Zb of omega tends to infinity and Za, Za of 10 to 0 tends to infinity, okay. That also will work, is not it? Uh, both these will work, okay. Actually, what you really need is that uh, Zb of omega magnitude should be much greater than Za of omega okay that is all I mean it does not may not be 0 and infinity, but if it is if it satisfies this condition then this is very close to very close to 1 and similarly here you want Z of 0 to be much greater than Z B of 0 okay in case of uh, DC it will be real uh, so we do not need the magnitude sign, but I just put it there anyway. This is okay. So, now I have got these uh, same ratios, but the point is the fraction that multiplies V i is evaluated at a different frequency than the fraction that multiplies V d c, okay. So, by making use of frequency dependent components, it is possible to have unity for both of these ratios, okay. Now, the conditions that we need are that at omega, the magnitude of Z b must be much more than magnitude of Z a, okay. So, that means that the division factor from here to there is almost 1. And similarly, at DC, the magnitude of ZA must be much more than magnitude of ZB, okay. And these cases that you specified are, you can see the special cases of this, right. If ZB of 0 is 0, then clearly any impedance will be much more than that one. And similarly, if ZA of omega is uh, 0, then any impedance will be much more than that. Similarly, for this, if ZB is infinity, then you can have finite ZA and this will be satisfied. And if ZA of 0 is in infinity, then this will also be satisfied with any value of ZB. Okay. So, all these are correct. So, this obviously means that there is more than one possible circuit. Okay. Yeah. So, let us see what to do. Okay. Let us first synthesize the circuit and yeah, it is actually a reasonable condition, right. It is not that signal will be a single frequency sinusoid. That will be quite uninteresting. Audio has let us say 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz and so on. So, there is a range of frequencies. So, we will see what to do in that case. Any questions about this? A linear circuit gives you a linear combination and if you just use resistors, then you get attenuation that is a scaling down of both uh, uh, signals V i and V d c that we do not want to have. Yeah, under the constraint that the input signal is not at d c, we have some freedom. We can make use of frequency dependent components to have uh, no attenuation that is no reduction in either signal, okay. Yeah, it will of course, then you cannot use this right, because uh, if we had DC component, I had to evaluate this also at 0, then this will simply be complementary to that. If you make one of them 1, the other one will become 0. No, no, I mean uh, I am assuming that the DC component of VI also has to pass through no with no attenuation, okay. And okay, yeah. One more thing is, I mean, just like you asked, if uh, the input has a band of frequencies, 
I would like the entire band to be have the same ratio ok, otherwise you are kind of uh, distorting the signal in some way right. That is if the input signal has uh, audio let us say from low frequencies to high frequencies for our purposes now we will we want all frequencies to be attenuated by the same constant number ok, we do not want any emphasis like we do not want to emphasize the treble or bass or something like that ok. So, that may be a function for a different circuit, but not for us now. Yeah, let us see, I mean it may not be 23 volts in every circuit, right. I mean this uh, VDC is not necessarily 23 volts. I said if I have 3 volts and VI, how do I get 3 volts plus VI? So, VDC is 3 volts, ok. okay so, now with these conditions just uh, tell me what are the possible circuits. If I use the first alternative here, what do I get? Huh? Zb is inductor. So, it is a short circuit for DC. Obviously, then if you pass the DC through inductor, it will uh, appear to be a short circuit for DC and ZA. Huh? It will be a capacitor. I mean, just I am just using the constraint that you gave, right? If ZA of uh, omega is 0, this should be a capacitor. I mean, it won't be exactly 0, it will tend to 0 if the capacitor is very large, ok. So, what other possibilities do we have? Huh? Resistor and inductor, yeah. Will this work? We have not evaluated the values of the components yet, but can this work? It appears so, right? Because uh, Zb of omega can be much more than Za of omega, and uh, Za of uh, Zb of zero is anyway zero. So this will also work. What else do we have? What other possibilities do we? What is it? Ah, ok. So, again resonance there is a problem that it works only for that frequency. We want it to work for a band of uh, frequencies, ok. Then what else do we have? Capacitor and resistor, ok. Now, this uh, Za is infinity at DC and depending on the size of the capacitor it will have some value at uh, the frequency omega. So, we can choose the capacitor so that it is very small at the frequency of omega. So, that also will satisfy ok. This is fine. So, essentially Zb should be like a short circuit for DC and open circuit for at the frequency of omega and Za should be the opposite. Za should be a short circuit at the frequency of omega and open circuit at DC. But of course, the real condition you need is this. Okay. So we have to choose the components. All these can be used, and they are used at uh, various times. But which is the circuit that we would prefer? The one with capacitor and resistor, because inductors tend to be bulky and uh, we usually use this, but of course, what matters is the how the impedances compare ok. So, if you go to a very high frequency let us say maybe 10 gigahertz or something or even gigahertz, then even a small inductor has a very high impedance ok, because the impedance is the product of the inductance and uh, the frequency ok. So, as even a small inductance can have a very high impedance. So, circuits like these are used at very high frequencies but at uh, relatively low frequency circuits the values of inductances you need for these conditions to be satisfied. Essentially the inductive impedance has to be much more than the other impedance that you connect. The values will be so high that you tend not to use them ok, but in principle there is nothing wrong with uh, using them ok. So, let us now pick this uh, particular circuit and see how it works. Is this fine? All I did was to make the resistor divider, I turned it into an impedance divider. So, 
the ratios depend on frequencies. Now, because we have signals at two different, I mean, we have summing uh, two voltages at different frequencies, VI at a frequency of omega and VDC at a frequency of 0, these ratios will not be complementary, ok. So, we can use the frequency dependent, we can use frequency dependent components to make both these ratios nearly 1 at the respective frequencies, ok. If you take a given frequency, they will of course be complementary, the sum of them will be 1, but because they are at different frequencies, the second ratio is uh, unity at DC and the first one is unity at the signal frequency, ok. So, that is all that is there too, is it fine? No, we can, we will see. So, now strategy to get, I will write this frequency omega, after that I will omit this. Okay. So, now clearly what is the DC component that appears here? What is the DC component that appears there? VDC, yeah, I mean capacitor is an open circuit, so it is VDC. What is the component of VI that appears there? Please evaluate that, ok. VI has a frequency of omega, ok. So, calculate the component of VI that appears here or if I call it uh, VX, calculate VX by VI ok of omega of course. Sometimes we write j omega, but I am a little sloppy with notation right now. Please do that, please do this calculation. Ignore VDC and calculate the, calculate what comes out here. So, what is the transfer function? Vx by Vi. j omega Cr by 1 plus j omega Cr ok and the magnitude of this is omega C r square by 1 plus omega C r square and the phase of this is so yeah this is the magnitude square sorry the magnitude of that is that divided by the square root of that ok. And the angle is what is the angle of the numerator? y by 2 and what is the angle of the denominator? Tan inverse omega C r. Are you all familiar with what Bode plot is? You are, ok. What is it? What do you plot versus what? Yeah, but how do you plot it? So, it is log here and log there as well if you take the magnitude or sometimes you plot it in decibel units where it is already a logarithm ok. So, let us say I do that uh, or rather let me plot the magnitude by itself, but on a log scale as well ok. So, how do you sketch anything? You look at some extreme values. What is the value of this at uh, DC? 0. So, how does it appear on the plot? Yeah, it does not show up on the plot because it is a log log plot the DC value and 0 are not there at all. What is the uh, what is the value at very high frequencies? 1 obviously right. So, at some very high frequencies it is 1. Now, where is the transition point? 1 over 1 by RC, 1 by CR, ok. What happens below that? What does this plot look like? It is a straight line. Essentially, at omega, when omega CR is much smaller than 1, in the denominator you can neglect this part and you just have omega CR, ok. So, the magnitude is directly proportional to frequency, ok. And in a log log scale that appears like a straight line. In the asymptotic plot, that is what it looks like, ok. And this rise, it is usually referred to as plus 20 dB per decade. What it means is that for every factor of 10 increase in frequency, the magnitude also increases by a factor of 10, which corresponds to 20 dB in decibel units, ok. And when you draw the asymptotic plot, you just draw these straight line segments, but of course, you are aware that here it does something like that. 
and at this point what is the magnitude yeah it is minus 3 dB or 1 over square root of 2 ok. And now what is the phase at very low frequencies? Pi by 2, what is the phase at 1 by R c? Pi by 4 and at very high frequencies 0. So, it does something like that and on a when the x axis is log this plot is actually symmetrical it looks symmetrical ok. And when you draw the Bode plot I think you are aware of this when you draw it with straight line segments what you what you do is this is called the break point right this 1 over r c. So, you approximate it by a straight line for a factor of 10 below the break point and factor of 10 above the break point. So, you can imagine that it consists of these straight line segments it is not very important, but that uh, that is an approximation that you can also make ok. Is this fine? So, please sketch the plots roughly to scale it should look like it should at least roughly look like what you would get if you plotted it exactly ok in MATLAB or some other tool ok. Now, that we have analyzed this so what what should we do with this? Huh? What should we do with this? It gives the frequency response that is fine. So, what does it mean for our design? The whole point for is for us to choose the component values right ok. So, maybe I mean first of all let me uh, now call this omega naught uh, just to distinguish it from this generic frequency variable omega. So, if the input is at a frequency omega naught where should it be on this plot? Obviously, like well above it where the magnitude is 1 and the phase is 0 ok. So, that means that basically the signal is coming out without any change the magnitude of the transfer function is 1 and if the phase lag is 0 then the uh, signal is coming out exactly as it is ok. So, your omega naught must be somewhere over here. So, that means that you should choose your c and r such that what should happen give me a 1 by r c must be much less than omega naught ok. Is this fine? Now, if you have a range of frequencies what will you do? Yeah, the smallest frequency is what is relevant here ok. If you have a range of frequencies then obviously, you want to have the range something like that. So, that the smallest of those frequencies still passes through a magnitude of 1 and a phase of 0. So, it is possible ok. Now, for the other networks you can go and evaluate yourselves when you have L and C or L and R you can do a similar you can carry out a similar exercise and make sure that you satisfy some condition you will get some condition ok. Is this fine? Now, there are many ways of uh, expressing this. V i is at a frequency of omega naught that is the signal frequency ok. We said that omega naught must be much greater than 1 by R c ok. So, essentially you should be in the pass band of this high pass filter from the input source to this output it is a high pass filter and you should be well in the pass band of it. So, that there is no change in magnitude or phase. Another way of uh, writing it which is normally how it is referred to in circuits is 1 over omega naught c is much less than r. What is 1 over omega naught c? It is the reactance of the capacitor at the signal frequency. So, the reactance of the capacitor at the signal frequency must be much smaller than the resistance that appears across it ok. We will see this again and again uh, in other circuits also we will see examples. So, the react so essentially you reduce the you reduce all the sources in the circuit to 0 ok and then you will have just one capacitor and a resistor across it whatever else is across it you can always reduce it to a resistor right because it is a linear circuit you can have 100 resistors, but you can always reduce it to just one resistor ok. So, the reactance of the capacitor 
must be much smaller than the resistance that appears across it. If you ensure that this condition will be satisfied, okay? Because we'll use it for various purposes, not just for take. I mean, adding the input and DC, okay? So now, how do we do this in our circuit? Our VDC is obtained by the combination of this VDD and the resistive divider. Okay. So this combination of VDD and the resistive divider. This is where I get my three volts, right? Let me call this one one prime. What is the equivalent between these two terminals? I mean, you know how to reduce a complicated circuits to an equivalent only looking at some particular two terminals. What are the equivalents you use? Thevenin or Norton? Okay, so give me the Thevenin equivalent of this. What is it going to be? And let's say that I also have adjusted R2 by R1 plus R2 to be 3 by 23. So, what is the Thevenin equivalent of this? Yeah, what is the voltage source value? Yeah, in general, the voltage source is the open circuit voltage that appears here, which is VDD times R2 by R2 plus R1. So, I will have 3 volts, okay. And in series with that, what will I have? R1 parallel R2, okay. So, now we have this picture where I combine VI with some VDC, okay. And I have this where I have biased the uh, bias the transistor and I have to add V i to it. Okay. So, now tell me what should I do? If I have V i and for simplicity for now I will omit the internal resistance R s. Okay. So, what should I do? I mean just do what is in the circuit on the left side. What should I do? Yeah. So, this is the picture I want to get, right. This is what I want to have where this VDC is 3 volts, okay. So, in my circuit, how do I generate the gate source bias? It is using this VDD R1 and R2, okay. And if I call this 1 1 prime, 1 prime is ground, then between these two terminals, this is equivalent to VDD times R2 by R1 plus R2 in series with R1 parallel R2. Okay. Is this correct? Okay. Now, this value has been adjusted to be 3 volts. Okay. So, essentially, I have this entire thing already, right. So, I have that whole thing. So, let me turn it around and draw it. I have R1 parallel R2 and 3 volts. So, what should I do to combine V i to it? I take my V i, this is 1 1 prime, take my V i and connect C to it. Is this okay? Is this fine? I did not explicitly connect any other resistor because my equivalent circuit between 1 1 prime already had a resistor in series, okay. This part clear? When I just showed you the picture with V i and uh, V d c, I had a capacitor here and a resistor here, okay. Now, my the way I generate my uh, 3 volt, what happens is I have a voltage source in series with a resistor already. So, this resistor is already present in my equivalent circuit and I, I do not need to add anything more, okay. Huh? Yeah. Which one? This one? This one? This one? Oh, that is just what I have here, right? It is just this part. I did not draw the transistor. I am only drawing the part that is generating VGS, that is all, okay? No, transistor part exists, that is fine, okay? The transistor part exists. So, now tell me what should I do here? I have VI. So, how do I make 3 volts plus VI appear at the gate? Yeah, where do I connect the capacitor? 
all I have to do is this right ok. So, this is how the circuit comes about. So, essentially this part here uh, let me maybe change the color of that whatever is shown in black here is exactly equivalent to this one ok. It is the same as that right with 3 volts the resistance in series with it is R 1 parallel R 2 which is already there and I have V i and C ok. So, now I have that circuit and if you choose that C properly R 1 and R 2 I have already chosen maybe ok based on how much voltage I want and some other considerations. So, if I choose the value of C properly I will get 3 volt plus V i at the gate of the MOS transistor that is what I wanted ok. Huh? Yeah. So, now this is uh, kind of a fake picture I also have this R s ok. So, please evaluate what happens in this case what is the voltage that you get here that is what is the fraction of the signal voltage that you get here and then how to choose the components ok. So, we will continue from there tomorrow. So, what we did was we wanted to combine the input signal voltage with the gate source bias voltage. Now, we can use any linear circuit to do that, but if you use only resistors then the signal voltage that appears at the gate will be smaller than the original signal voltage. Similarly, the bias voltage will be smaller than what you start off with, but if you add the constraint that the signal is not at DC whereas, bias of course, is at DC then you can use frequency dependent components to get over this limitation and get a combination at the gate which is 1 times the signal plus 1 times the bias ok that is no reduction in either the signal or the bias. And the most practical one the most frequently used is to use the capacitor and resistor and the way to use this capacitor and resistor in our case because we already have the resistive divider is to simply connect a capacitor between V i and that one ok. So, now we have this resistor also please evaluate the signal component that appears between gate and source including the resistor and have some suggestions for me by tomorrow's class as to how to choose all the components ok. Thanks.